Hello, I'm Darlene with Friends of Fairview, and we're a nonprofit organization dedicated to preserving Fairview Cemetery right here in New Albany, Indiana, as well as the legacies and the stories of the people that are buried here. You can see behind me all the graves, but I'm on the edge of the cemetery because the story I want to tell you today is the story of Wilhelm Cornelius Wren. Wilhelm Cornelius Wren would go by his middle name Cornelius or Coney for short. Um, so Cornelius Wren or Coney Wren is usually how you would see him referred to. Um, he was born July 5th, 1876. So we just passed his 147th birthday um, last week when at the time of this filming his birthday, his 147th birthday was last week. Um, so he died, unfortunately, in a tragic accident on the Ohio River, October 20th, 1924. And I will relate that story here in just a second. But to tell you a little bit about uh, Cornelius or Coney, he, um, he, well, first of all, let me show you. There he is. You can see Coney Wren is what reads on his headstone. Coney Wren. One thing that's special about this story is that Coney is my first cousin four times removed. So his father was Joseph Wren. And now Joseph Wren is my third great uncle. And he was the brother to my third great grandmother who is Mary Wren. Uh, pretty cool, right? Now Joseph Wren, his, so Coney's father, Joseph Wren, married twice. His first wife was Catherine Liebs, if that's how you say her name, L-E-I-B-S, Liebs or Liebs. Um, and so they had seven children together before Catherine passed away. Now, if you've heard of the Wren Bottling Works by any chance, so that was here in New Albany for several decades. Um, it spent most of its time located on State Street. So on the corner of State and Oak for a while, and then I think it moved a little further down somewhere sometime after that. But it spent most of its time in operation on State Street. Um, you can see right here a picture of one of the trucks from the Bottling Works. The person on the truck is Robert Wren. Now, Robert Wren was one of Joseph's sons. So the sons that worked in the bottling works with their father, Joseph, um, they were from the first marriage. So they were sons from the first marriage, which was Catherine Liebs. So we've got Robert here in the picture, but then I believe um, Lawrence was another one that worked there. And then also Joseph, Joseph's son, Joseph. Uh, also, Joseph Jr. was also worked in the Bottling Works and I believe took it over after his father passed away or retired or whatever. But anyway, so these are the Wrens of the Wren Bottling Works. Now then, Catherine passed away and Joseph married Margaret Ritter. So Margaret Ritter Wren and Joseph would go on to have eight children and Car Coney was one of their children. So a lot of kids, right, that Joseph had with his two wives, seven with the first and eight with the second, Cornelius being of the second marriage. Um, so now Cornelius had uh, two marriages of his own. So his first marriage was to Victorine, uh, Catherine, I think she was called, Katie was her nickname. Um, Belvoy or Belv. I've seen it spelled two ways, B-E-L-V-O-I-S or B-E-L-V-I-Y. I've seen it both ways. Um, and so she married, uh, he married Victorine. They were only married for a few months before they separated and then began the proceedings of divorce. But within those few months they were together, they, uh, Victorine got pregnant. So they had a little son, his name was Clark uh, John Wren, Clark John Wren. Now Victorine would go on to marry just a two years later. She married Martin Belvy, same last name as her. So I can't, I haven't found documentation to see if they were related or not in any way, but I don't know, I have no idea, but they had the same last name. So she married Martin Belvy, who Martin then, her second husband, adopted Clark. So then Clark's last name became, instead of Wren, it became Belvy, Clark John Belvy. It's unclear how much contact that Corny would have had with Clark 
his son? My guess is probably not much, seeing how he was adopted by his stepfather. Um, it seemed like they were living over in Jeffersonville and Cornelius was here in New Albany. So I don't think he probably had much contact, but I don't know. How do we know? We don't know we weren't there, right? But it's possible. Um, so in 1905 though, just a few years after Victorine uh, remarried, uh, then Corny, Corny would go on, Coney would go on to remarry. He married for his second wife, Mary Mater Jacobs. Now Mary Mater Jacobs, her first husband was Horace Bell Jacobs. So her maiden name is Mater, Mary Mater. And she married Horace Bell Jacobs and they had a daughter Mildred. Now they weren't together for very long either because by the time Mildred is two, Mary and Mildred are living with Mary's parents. Um, they are not with him anymore and he would go on to remarry and so would she. So um, they got married the same year that Corne Cornelius and Victorine, 1880 and 1899 is when both of those two couples got married. They both didn't last, their marriages didn't last very long um, at all before then they were remarrying somebody else. So Mary Mater Jacobs married Cornelius Wren in 1905. Now, I, from the documentation that I've seen, census records and stuff, they were definitely leave, living together uh, as husband and wife married for at least 10 years after they were married. But then after that, it gets a little uh, confusing as to how long they were married. Were they married, divorced, whatever? I don't know. There's conflicting um, documentation. In Mary Mater Wren's death record, she never remarried after Cornelius. She, she died a Wren, so her last name was still Wren when she was buried. But um, on her death certificate, her daughter Mildred was the informant, and she lists her mother as being widowed. However, on Coney's death certificate, which his sister Nora was the uh, informant, she lists Coney as being divorced. So I don't know. I don't have no idea. Um, there's conflicting evidence that say different things. So I have no idea if they were married at the time of Coney's death. Um, so, but Mary Mater Wren and her daughter Mildred are buried together. You can see right here where they are. They're buried together here in Fairview, not far from where Coney is buried. Um, in an unmarked grave. So there's no headstones to mark their resting place other than this spot, this empty spot right here that I'm showing you now. But back to Cornelius. Um, on October 20th, 1924, Coney, who is listed as a wallpaper hanger, that's what he did for a profession in a city directories, census records, even articles that describe the incident I'm about to relate to you right now, call him a paper hanger from New Albany. So I'm guessing wallpaper hanger. He's listed as having as a, being a private contractor working for himself. So he was a private contractor, a paper hanger. So he was rowing in a skiff across the Ohio River from the New Albany side heading toward the Louisville side. He didn't get very far into, you know, away from the New Albany shore before he was struck by an oil barge. It said like, or a coal barge. Um, some reports or some accounts call it a steamer. Some say it's a barge, but it was carrying coal. And it hit Coney's skiff and it sent him flying into the air. He landed in the Ohio River and washed downstream. They found his body 10 days later. So on October 30th, his body washes up on shore about uh, three miles south on the on the Kentucky side of the Ohio River, just south of Valley Station, uh, in a place called I think it's Cosmosville, something like that, Kentucky, um, Cosmosville, um, Kentucky, just south of Valley Station, is where his body washed ashore ten days later. He was buried the very next day um, here in New Albany, uh, in, or in Fairview Cemetery, right here where I stand the next day he was buried. He's buried here all by himself. No family is near him. Um, he's got other people buried here, but none of them are family members. He's just here in a single grave. Um, but you can see some of the newspaper articles that I have just been showing you show his tragic accident and death. And, you know, I think about Coney, my, my cousin, cousin Coney and I think of his last few minutes 
and the struggle and the terror as he was trying to fight for his life. And then eventually you would get to the place where you would succumb. You would accept the fact that this was it and you weren't going to make it. And you would just succumb to the, to what was happening, you, to what was that your end was here. Um, I just hope that his, his last few minutes were peaceful, I guess as peaceful as drowning can be, and that he didn't struggle and suffer too, too much. Uh, my hope, um, my cousin, cousin Coney. Um, but anyway, so that is the story of Wilhelm Cornelius Wren. He died in his 40s. Just a normal, everyday, average guy living here in New Albany, a paper hanger, well, paper hanger his own little business, right? Um, going about his daily business, trying to create a life, build a family, tried twice with two wives, just an everyday ordinary story that so many people have. Um, and unfortunately his uh, death, very tragic death. Um, yeah, I don't know, just, it just gets me here again, <laughs> cousin Coney, that that would be his end. And so I just wanna make sure his story is told that his existence is acknowledged. We see his headstone here, so we know he was here. Tell me. We know he was here. So um, I just want to wish my cousin Coney a happy birthday. Happy birthday, cousin Coney. 147th birthday. Happy birthday. So this is a Darlene with Friends of Fairview. And until next time, bye-bye.